Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Tech Team Trance Channel, where today we're going to migrate VMware Virtual Machine to Proxmox here in 2022. So first, we're going to be preparing the guest for migration. The guest we're going to be preparing is Windows XP. I have a use for this environment. I want to experiment with it a little bit, try to figure out how to get it to run in this modern day and age. So I'm going to take it over to my Proxmox. It's currently running in VMware Player 16. So what we're going to need to do is uninstall VMware Tools. And I stop the program, VMware Tools. I also check the task manager to make sure it's not running before I attempt to uninstall it. Okay, so I've confirmed that that program is not running and I'm going to proceed with going to control panel to add remove programs. Going to search for the uh, VMware Tools program, and we're going to uninstall it from there. All right, make the necessary changes. This is going to take a little minute, so please be patient. It shouldn't take too long. And this is very important because we are converting this to a Proxmox virtual machine and we do not need anything VMware tools. So that could cause further complication in getting things to run properly. The next thing that's gonna pop up is um, gonna ask you if you wanna reboot your system. Just say no, because we have something else to do. We're going to execute the file merge red dot file. It's a, a um, this relates, it's very important that you do this because it relates to being able to use IDE with your virtual machine in Proxmox. Next, we want to shut down the VM and preparation for the, uh, the moving to the server and importing to the server. All right, so now you want to make sure that you download PuTTY. PuTTY is an SSH Telnet client. It's going to allow you to issue commands to Proxmox in the uh, command line interface. Now you're going to need to download WinSCP. It's a popular SFT client for when you can copy files between local computer and remote servers using FTP and various other uh, protocols. You can upload the VMDK file to Proxmox with then SCP. You're going to have to log in to Proxmox and navigate to the Verilive VZ images. Then you're going to have to create a VM. I created a folder 108 for the VM that's going to be created when I actually go into Proxmox. So I happen to know the next number that I'm going to create Proxmox. So you want to go in to your local where you store all your local VMs for, for VMware. You want to find the VDMK file. And then you want to upload it into that folder we just created on the server, on the Proxmox server. All right, so this is going to take a minute to upload. We'll just speed up the video while it does it. Let's see. It's very important that we upload this and they get it uploaded. Therefore, we convert it. We're actually going to convert it on Proxmox using the command line interface by SSH into the Proxmox installation. So this is going to take a minute.
All right, next we're gonna create the VM in Proxmox. We, with Proxmox, we will create the machine 108 as Windows XP the, or the operating system of your choice in your case. So we have machine 108 ready to be created. I'm gonna name it Windows XP 1004. And then I'm gonna click, I'm gonna check the resource pool. There's none there, so there's, there's no need to even bother with that. Click next. And then ultimately, we're, we don't have an ISO to install with. So we're gonna do not use any media. Click do not use any media at this stage. But we'll use this feature later to uh, access a CD-ROM that's an ISO in the operating system. Now we want to select the operating system that we have. The type is Windows. We're going to set version XP 2003. Going to click Next. I do not mess with any of the graphics card settings because I remote into them so it kind of takes, you know, the client machine. So anyway, we're going to create the disk anyway and just you can use them. I always give it more disk storage than what we had. Then we're going to create the processor. We're going to use one socket, two cores. Just to keep it real simple. And we're going to use memory. We're going to use two gigabytes. Because we're getting near the maximum for Windows XP type deal. I'm sure we could probably use more. I don't know. Anyway, we check the network. I don't mess with any of those. Then we're just going to take a look at all our settings just to do a once over to make sure that everything is correct. Looks like we won't have any issues when we try to import and then start the machine. So once I'm satisfied that everything's correct, I will go ahead and click finish. And I'll take us to the screen. You'll see the 108 appear over here and it's question mark so it's creating the machine and doing everything and now the machine has been created next we have to rename the vmdk file to the uh the way that is done in proxmox so it'd be vm-108-10.0.vmdk dash 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 replace with your vm number so i'm going to go ahead and do that right now in win scp and this will make it a little easier for you down the line because you don't have to write it into your Command. All right, so we're going to type that on in. All right, and just click off of it, and then it should be good. We're going to, with PuTTY, we're going to import this to virtual machine. We're going to use the QM import command with the VMID, the source, the storage, and the options. And then I'll move myself over so you can see the command. That's the command I used my way to get it to work. See, I used the folders and all that stuff to get it going. So I inputted the command into, I typed it up on Notepad, and then I entered it into the PuTTY. And as you see, the command is executing. So the disk is being imported and it's being converted to QCAL2 format where it can be readable by Proxmox. This takes a little while, so please be patient, pack your patience. Okay, and this is very important because this is the crux of the operation here. This is where we're actually, you know, converting that, that this to an appropriate format that can be read by Proxmox. You could use this, convert to several other formats like raw, et cetera. And if you ever need to, you could be like QM import disk and then issue a help command and it'll give you all the you know, help you need in terms of uh, you know, dealing with QM import. But it's easier than using com image convert. 
I had a problem using image convert. All right, so the disk has been successfully imported. We can now proceed to replace the disk of the VM. In Proxmox, the hard drive created for the VM must be replaced with the image we converted to QCAL2 in the previous step. So what I'm going to do is basically detach the hard drive that came with it, and then I'm going to attach my hard drive. And as you can see, it's there. Give this one away. This one. We need to. We need to. We need to unattach it and and actually, you know, because if you don't, this will not pro boot properly, as you see here. So. What we have to do is we have to make sure the VM boots from the converted disk. In Proxmox, the VM settings check that the drive is listed and set the boot order so that it boots first. So we'll go ahead and do that. Didn't take too long. All right. So what we do is edit the boot order. Notice that number three, drive one, 108 VM disk one, QCOP two, 16 gigabytes is not set. Make sure you check that. And then we're gonna drag and drop to reorder to the top so that it boots first. Now we should have no problem booting this machine. And let's see here, get it start. It did encrypted. And there you go. There you have it. Windows XP starts as expected. Okay, and this just takes a minute. Like, I don't have the best of hardware settings for it. I just gave it minimal settings just to get it up and running. So I'm having a little mouse problem, so uh, not clicking into the window like I wanted it to. So uh, I have to do a little manipulating and messing around to get things functioning again. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and log into this whenever I can. All right, so I'm going to enter my password. I forgot my password. Try again. All right, when we come into the operating system, we're going to be greeted with some messages regarding the uh, hardware wizard. I'm just going to ignore those for now. We're going to deal with that a little bit later here in this video. Uh, yeah, we, we, it's gonna, and, the, and then you could also check your hardware device manager, for what actually is missing so you can get a good head handle on what is actually missing. Some of this will be installed automatically by Windows. In the meantime, I'm going to go to the command prompt. You don't have to do this step. I'm just checking the IP address so that. I know what the IP address that I'm dealing with down the road. You can see that Windows is finished installing new devices. And the next time I boot this operating system, I shouldn't be greeted with all those hardware device windows. Now we're going to download Vert IO and mount the VM to CD drive. We're going to, Windows does not have native support for Vert IO devices included, but there is excellent external support through open source drivers which are available and compiled and assigned for for Windows. So I'm on the Proxmox page. I find my way to Vert IO. Download a version that is reasonably uh, applicable to your operating system. And this is specifically a step for Windows. I'm gonna download the ISO. And then I'm going to upload it to Proxmox. 
after the down the ISO is downloaded. So that's almost complete. Okay, once done, we're going to go up to and upload in Proxmox that ISO that we just downloaded for Vert IO. I'm going to upload it. Then we're going to go into the VM settings. And basically change the hardware regarding the CD-ROM drive. Instead of using no, no drive or any media, we're going to select local. And then we're going to select the file that we just uploaded and click OK. And I didn't notice this, but it will show up right away in your operating system when you mount it. As you can see, it's there, but I chose to reboot anyway, and it's and it's still going to be mounted. But that's one great feature about Proxmox is that it allows you to uh, mount this, and and where we don't have any CD-ROM drives, the server itself does not have any CD-ROM drives or anything like that. So that's the wonderful thing about ISO files. So we're going to boot in and then basically we're going to you know try to install some drivers see how it boots take note of how it boots we shouldn't be getting too many uh messages regarding hardware okay everything seems to be working All right, so I'm going to be working off of that vert IO disk. And then I'm just going to basically run the guest agent, the QEMU guest agent. I don't know if this step helped me or hurt me. You know what I mean? I don't think I needed to do it, but I think earlier I was having an issue with the internet connection of the virtual machine, so uh, I wanted to make sure that all drivers were installed and everything was up and running. And also, it doesn't hurt to check your device manager to determine if there's any hardware issues that you might run into. With that, we're almost complete here so thank you for watching if you guys have any questions feel free to leave a comment below if you like the video please like the video on your way out please share and please subscribe thank you for watching and have a great day